Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can't choose Aye. Aye. Welcome to the jungle. We got fun and games. Yes, we got everything you want. Brother, you know the name. We are the people that you find. Whatever you may need. If you got the scoop the deed, we got your disease. Yeah, welcome to the jungle. You know the story. He took the bus from Indiana, got off the bus, and a guy said, you're in the jungle, baby. You're going to die. Really? Yeah, it's like an, that lyric is an I think I said this on the podcast before. I didn't know. I've never heard that. Uh, you said that a lot, though. My memory's out. Uh, it's funny. Fine. We're like opposites. Uh, everything everything we talk about, I'm like, I think we talked about this. And then you're like, I never heard this in my life. Right. Even though there's a recording of you reacting to it. That's true. I remember nothing. You remember everything. I remember everything. Great John Prine song, right before he died. Ah, uh, but yeah, so Yeah, COVID. He was the most famous COVID death until Meatloaf. Two wonderful artists. Wow. The yeah. meatloaf was anti-vax. Yeah. And then died, and everyone was like, ha ah, And you're like, ah, bleep that. But, you <laughs> yeah, know. Like, no, I don't get that whole thing. Like, I thought we cared about people. By the way, I actually bleep that. Sorry. I, I did a podcast. Oh, we did the podcast. Uh, Our podcast. Where I was like, hey, make sure you take that out. And she's like, but that's your running gag. What? And I realized I have a gag yeah, where you, I'm like, take that out. Oh. And then I also sometimes I'm like, oh, Jesus, don't put that in there. I, right. me- I meant to tell you. I this. need a hand signal or something. Yeah, because at the grammar when you're like, that girl didn't take it out. I'm like, well, it you is- say it so much. Yeah. <laughs> well, she said that because she's the producer of The Regs. And we did a Regs episode where anytime anybody says anything, I'm like, edit that. We got to take this oh. out. And then afterwards, I was like, hey, what the fuck, you piece of shit? You didn't edit out that thing. And she's like... Well, you said that 48 times during this podcast, and you didn't oh, mean it once. That makes and sense. And I was like, ah, damn it. Yeah, There'd be no footage. Yeah, yeah. True. good yeah. point. So it's a <laughs> running gag, and sometimes... Sylvia girl? Natalie. Natalie! Yeah. That's the one. She can bring home the bacon and fry it in the pan. Good kid, that big Nat. Sweetheart. Natty she Light. was our producer. But anywho... <laughs> ah, jeez, he didn't smile. She's fun. But, um... It took you long enough to give us that Skank Fest video, but we got it! That wasn't from her, though, Thank was it? Thank you. Well, another score for the Nat Dog. Yeah, Natty. Natty Light, Natty Ice, oh, Nat, yeah. Natalie. Big, big Nat trolls. That'd be fun. If my name was Natalie, I would come out to the song Battery by Metallica, but Natalie. Oh. Natalie. It's like an Asian saying it. Natalie. Battery. Battle of, yeah. Natalie. Oh, boy. Got that. What? Uh, <laughs> not really. There we go. That's it's not as funny of a bit though when you say cut that not really I guess at the end we got to pile up all the cut yes. thats <clears throat> and figure out what's going on oh yeah well, well it's good to see what do you got a haircut uh, I got a haircut a couple weeks ago might have been a while since I seen you and yeah. then uh, we did the turkey turkey where'd you go ah they <laughs> made it seem like the haircut and the turkey were uh, connected oh no no connection but there was a hair in my stuffing I in, don't my, know. in my meatloaf no kidding yeah i don't mind a hair i don't love it i don't love it hey <laughs> you jumped and love it i'm not saying i love it but i got a hair in my food i pull it out i throw it off to the side i keep moving i do the same well living with a lady i get a hair in my own ass you ever had one of these where you go what the fuck? That's a 17-inch hair right in my asshole. All the time. I don't know how it got in there. Maybe my underwear. Maybe she's putting my underwear on her head for fun. <laughs> yeah. But I have. I have pulled out a long hair, and it, it kind of feels nice because it's it down does. the back of your ass. Yes, yes. It's like flossing. So that's fun. How about this, by the way? I just had a wild moment. Not wild moment. What the fuck am I talking about? But Jason Canner, our friend, oh, friend of the sure, show, sure. past guest, one of my best buds in the wide world, just got engaged. What? In Mexico. Get out of here. Yes, sir. No champagne. Engaged. Wow. Engaged. That's uh, Jean-Luc Picard. Ah. Well, he's engaged, and uh, they're in Mexico. What? And he sends me the news, and I go, oh, my God, this is great. Send me her number. I got I to gotta write to her and say congrats, whatever, he from married, Rhode Island. married an immigrant? Rhode Island. Oh, I thought she was Mexican. No, no, they just went to Mexico. I see. I like thought he song. went back to her homeland. No, no. Her homeland is Rhode Island, and uh, she's Chuck's neighbor. 
So I go, oh my God, this is amazing. Then you ever do this? You're like, you go, uh, well, send me your number. I got to write a nice sure. note. And then like three days pass, and you're like, yeah, I guess I should. Yeah. It's weird when he's with her, and he's like, oh, Joe just asked your number, so he's going to write to you. Right. And then she's like, he didn't write anything to me. Good point. And then, but you're all, my mind is mush. So, anyways, I write, God bless you. You're the best girlfriend he ever had. I hated all the other girlfriends. I hope they die. Is she the laugher? Big laugh. Good laugh on this broad. Yes. So cackle even. I'm, I walk up here. I'm going to do the podcast. I go to get Starbucks. I get my bucks. I walk out. There she is. Whoa. I go, what the fuck is this? How about that? Yeah, out there and uh, and loving every second of it. But how how rare to bump into like nine million people. I know. In this town and I mean, right just up there. Right back from the uh, thing. I said, where's Jason? She said he killed himself. And, Finally. Uh, I'm single. And I said, all right, I'll, I'll get you some names. There we go. Chuck's but, here. But, uh, yeah. yeah. All right. We can do better. He's got, a, he's, got a, he's got a host of women already. That's true. You know, you got no time for old cackle box. <laughs> cackle box. <laughs> that's gold. Good band name. Hey. Uh, Kind of like Candlebox. Yes, that's right. That's right. Peter Klett. Aha. He was the guitar player. Cackle football. Uh, <laughs> um, whoa, we're hot, baby. What the hell was that? I don't know. Probably some jizz. <laughs> yeah, it's a sticky wall here. But any farts, yeah, Thanksgiving, back from the wars. You went up to Massachusetts? No, no, no. Uh, Louisiana. Uh, yeah, downtown, all the way down. Southern, the Gulf of Mexico down mm. there. And uh, isn't that weird? We're on the Gulf. Your golf is funny. Golf, not golf. Golf. Weird. I think you said it the same both times. I know. I'm just saying it's weird that I'm I lived I grew up by the Gulf. Yeah, it is weird. And Sarah gulfed. too. That's right. Two Gulfs, different cities, Gulf Gulf. Well, what's the ocean? Tough. If wh- how does a Gulf isn't it all ocean? What makes it a Gulf? Well, it's surrounded by the land. It's uh, inward. It's, oh, it's in, 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 but I think it, it's got to be salt water in the Gulf, right? It, it's got, or is it brackish? Brackish. Yeah. What does that mean? Brackish is like you know the tide comes. It's like, it's got some salt. I think it's some salt. It's like the pulp. Yes, it's all <laughs> shit, pulp. dead fish, and trash growing up. We used to go to the Gulf. And your parents would go, we're going to the beach. It's brown sand with all kinds of bottles and syringes, and then like two tides uh, once a day. Just yeah, there's and there's like Galveston, which yes. si- and, the, and the a wave is the size of my dick. Yes, uh, but then Key West, you're in the Gulf. That's is that nice. Gulf? That That's, seems like ocean. It's Caribbean, uh, I guess, but I think it's the Gulf. They're lazy out there. Oh, that was a I, lot of work. I had to force that one. I think half the people just thought their radio died <laughs> or whatever they listen on. Well, yeah, I went down to the Gulf of Mexico, down to Louisiana, me and the lady. I got us both. How about this one? Got a, I bought our tickets to the <clears throat> to the to the airplane. I got us two exit rows. <laughs> tickets to the airplane. Yes, to get on it. And I got us an exit row. She got window. I got aisle. The seat in the middle never got occupado. So we had a nice whole row. Love that. Got upgraded. I held back. I stayed in the row. Can you do that? I said I'm turning it down. I didn't know you could do that because mine it just goes bloop. And then you're in a different seat because I've had this where they upgrade me to a window. Uh And I don't want a fucking window. And I don't know how to go back. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I just went, but maybe I just forget, didn't ask because I'm an asshole. So I just went, all right, well, I guess I'm a window. And I just held my piss for three days and shit my pants. It's the worst. I hate the window. Right when I sit down on the window, I have to piss. It's like my brain knows, like, you're stuck here. It's jail. Same. I'm like, that was going to bed. Uh, yes. I, I piss. I brush my teeth. I wash my face. I kiss my father. You know, I, I lick the baby. Yeah. I get in bed. As soon as I sit down, I'm like, I got to piss again. Yes. Because it feels like I'm not going to be able to sleep. I'll have to piss in 10 minutes. And so I walk back out there. And the thing is, I don't actually have to piss. It's It's just a mental mental thing. It's all mental. So then what I do is I stand over the toilet for about 35 minutes while my wife is masturbating. Yeah. And then I come back and fall asleep and piss two hours later anyways. There you go. Well, a couple things on that. One, I have that with when when I'm banging the lady. She goes, don't finish. Don't come. And I'm like, I'm coming now. Right when you say it, it's over. So if you ever want to get pregnant, sister, just just yell, don't come, because I will shoot it right in the tailpipe. Which is fine, because I had the opposite. I had the woman that says, if you don't come, I'm going to be pissed. Oh. And I was like, well, you just sealed the deal. There's no way I'm coming. No, that's it. So, uh, and then the other thing was my dad's got some prostate issues. Oh, boy. Uh, 
Cross yes, State sir. Farm. No, just like an enge- en- engulfed. No, enge- engulfed. Engorged. Oh. Big. Enlarged. Enlarged. Ah. He's got an enlarged prost, and he says he's it's pull, putting up against the ureth. Oh. This is just random Thanksgiving, full mouth of turkey. Oh, is that right? Oh, you know. And uh, he said he's, it's dripping out, so he's got to go get it drained. Oh, or it depends. Uh, depends on what. Chuck's eating a banana while making eye contact, and it's oh, fucking me up. God, it's throwing me all off. I'm engorged. I don't, I don't care for it. No, no one, no one does. Well, I, I can't imagine. When I'm 70, I can't imagine, because my prostate's already the size of Kentucky. I, I piss every eight seconds. I'm in pain all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's not good. Old age is a real cum guzzler. But not for us. AI, they're going to have the machine with the scans. They're going to be able to just blast your dick off. Well, I don't want that either. <laughs> I think that's the Russian prime minister, by the way. <laughs> Dick off. <laughs> Dick off. Uh, but yeah, I think I think they'll be able to cure a lot of this. They'll shrink oh, your really? prostate right up. A big computer. Will... Boop. All right. Well, we'll have no human interaction, no friends, no sexual contact. But we'll have AI helping our prostate. No, we're fucked. Speaking of which, let me throw this at your ass and see if it uh, sticks on there along with sure. all the other stuff. Sorry, I had to take my shoe off because the wart. Ah, I thought it was like a Michael Jackson thing. People didn't care for that. Wart talk. Really? I don't just assume. Oh, no. One guy sent me, because I told him about my callus, and he sent me a scraper. Oh. Yeah, so it looks like a cheese grater. You do on your foot. You want to borrow it. Oh, that's nice. Nah, I think I'm okay. Okay. Um, I love these people. That I have a family member. I was like telling them about the, the, the plan award. Some guy's like, sounds like a corn. That's a corn. Oh, uh, yeah. And I'm like, I've been to the doctor four times. Why right. not just go, oh, that sucks. Corn. Bad band. Uh, just, uh, I mean, agree. I, adamantly. Yeah, the worst. So yeah. I'm saying all my words wrong. I haven't slept in two months. I can't imagine. I, it's, it's, they say it's the, the next level of tired. Like, you never thought you'd be this tired. Yeah, it's fucked. It's like the equivalent of being, like, shit house. I keep saying the wrong word, calling people the wrong name. It's fucked. It's is horrible. It, is it kind of fun? Because you're like, hey, I'm in sober, so now I'm, I'm fucked up again. A little bit. You walk around, you feel a little whacked out, and it's similar. You're slurring, and yeah. you know, I'm like, I'm calling my wife, you know, your name, and I'm calling your wife my name. <laughs> it's, it's bad. <laughs> but, um, so how about this? Talk about no interaction, all the stuff, and I don't want to throw teenagers under the bus here. but Put them under. Um, I go up to Whitman, Massachusetts for the big Thanksgiving, the whole thing. I take my baby to the football game, his first football Whoa, game. It's exciting. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he slept through it, but what are you going to do? Me, my dad, and the baby. Three generations at the football game. Love it. Very exciting, very sweet. If there's grass on the field. And I say to my nephew, he's in high school, I say, how was the pep rally? And he goes, oh, no one goes to that. We mm. skip. That's skip day. Mm. This is devastating to me. This is the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. The pep rally Love in high pep. school, freshman year, you get, uh, you know, back then at least, you got tortured. People threw fucking eggs at you. Sure. And it, it came on your face, which oh, I yeah. liked. Yeah. But my sophomore, junior, senior year, those pep rally days, those are three of the best days of my whole life. The best. You finger a girl under the bleacher, maybe you slip a little, hit a hit a Mickey there, a little flask, and just hoot and holler. I was a mascot you're talking to. I, I never had more fun in my entire life. You get the chat. I mean, I, I got photos. I'll send them to you. We can post them. I mean, face painted, oh, underwear yeah. on my head, underwear over the pants, a cape. I was running around. I mean, it was fucking, we went crazy. You circled the day. Yes. Everybody was pumped. Nobody would think, maybe the Marilyn Manson trench coat piece right. of shit the would skip. But- Everybody was there, and it was fucking packed yes. and wild, and we had the powder puff game, and it was fucking, it ruled. The best. And by the way, and then you go Lunch. to the football game, and all the students that do, actually do go to the game, they're just chatting. They don't root for the team. Oh. Like that's, that's like gay. What are they? Are they texting, I imagine? I think TikTok-ing? they text. They don't go. They talk. I think it's like considered stupid or gay if you're like, yeah, we fucking scored. Right, and I right. tell you, I'm talking face paint up oh, and down. Yeah. I ran up the field with the line of scrimmage. Yes. And I go crazy. Chants, Black. everything. Blackface. I love the cheerleaders. I love the uh, the flips and the, who are we here for? Queefs or yes. whatever. I love all that. We knew all the chants. Yeah, we were all in there. I saw, I was watching the cheerleaders closely. Not yes. a single basket toss. What? You know the basket toss? Yes. Sure you know the toss. No toss. toss. They're all in sweatpants hanging out. They didn't even cheer. I'm telling you. Oh. 
Oh, they didn't even no cheer. They didn't go T O U C H down B L O W M E. They didn't do anything. They just sat around bullshitting. Man, I'll tell you, flip side of the coin. I went to England. We went to a, an Arsenal game. They were doing chants about every player's wives. All these guys called them homo and slow mo and bozo. It was great. It was specific. B O Z O. Um, what kind of clown. Speaking uh, of which, I got an Uncle Brian. I've mentioned him here before. He's the funniest guy I've ever met in my whole life. Just uh, we talked about him once before. Where it's like one of these guys. He's like he's just a carpenter mechanic guy. He doesn't. It's not like he's hanging out with comic. Like he has no influences. Mm. He's just funny. Yes. Like it's not like you know. Oh yeah, he's he kind of he must have been a big Louis fan right, growing up. Right. He's just a guy that's funnier than anybody I've ever met in my life. I love those guys. And they're uh, never comedians. He's not a big football fan. And so we're watching a football game, and you know, sometimes they, the offense tries to draw the defense offside. It's like fourth and four, so they're going to do uh, like a hard count. Hit, hit, hit. And they hope they go, ah! Uh-huh. And I'm trying to explain this concept to him. He's not understanding. I'm like, well, they're hoping they'll just jump over the line of scrimmage early. Right. And he goes, so how do they do that? What do they, what do they say? Uh, hey, your mother stinks and your pants are dirty? <laughs> Is that gold? That's not bad. That's what he came up with. That's going to make the other team go, why I ought to? Yeah. And he could have said, we fucked your mother. Right. You know, you're, you're a homo, whatever. He came up with, your mother stinks and your pants are dirty. That is cute. That's a funny insult. That's like a Matt Wayne, it feels like. He's a very funny guy. That's not, a- not in this room, it didn't do well, well but that's funny. funny. But it's clean. Well, that's what makes it so hey, funny. That's funny about it, yeah. That's the misdirect. Right. That's his shit talk. Hey, your mother stinks and your pants are dirty. Pants are dirty. I've never heard. I like it. <laughs> They're jumping on. Oh, no! I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. He told me my pants were dirty. <laughs> that sounds like a fun guy. That's funny. Good for him. All right. He so, bombed here. Well, the kid doesn't like the... Uh, how'd the kid do? I mean, that's, that's a little stressful. you got to have this little... Loaf of bread in your hand the whole time. No, they invented this seat with wheels on it. You ah, push them. Yeah, it's the wheelchair. You put them, <laughs> you put them in the stroller. Uh-huh. You roll them up there, and he's asleep. He doesn't know he's there. But we got up early. It's very exciting, and you know me. I'm a big traditionalist, and so every year Sarah and I run the road, road race down in Hingham. Hingham. Is, Hingham, which I, I might move there. That's a hell of a town. Really? Oh, it's beautiful. What about the nippiness? Isn't that old nippy on the kid? He might. F- Frostbite out there. Well, he didn't come to the race. Ah, but I went to I go to the the big race, seven thirty a.m. Sarah couldn't run, which is funny because you're because she just had the surgery and everything. So you're like, well, at least walk it because that's our oh. tradition. My my mother will watch the baby. We'll go. We'll do our thing, and then you realize that's a great plan. But then you realize when you walk, it's going to take her forty five minutes longer than everybody. Of course, usually you run, it takes you seventeen minutes, and then you're like, all right, let's get out of here. Yeah. So I finished my race. And I'm covered in sweat. Now I'm just freezing. It's like 20 degrees. I'm covered in sweat, and she's just walking. There's nowhere to hide. No 7-Eleven, Cumby. No, and she has the car key because oh. she had a purse. So I'm like, you take the car key. Right. Car key pants. Um, car- and park your carcass. So I finish uh, the run, and I'm walking. And then you, you watch all the runners come in that are slower than you. They suck. And I'm, I'm going, yeah, hey, come on, finish it up. Woo. And a guy runs by with a King's Point. Sweatshirt. Now, mm. this is my friend Derek's alma mater. Uh, is that how you say it? Mater. Mater. Yeah, no yeah. R. Mater should I trust the government. So he's running by, and I went, hey, King's Point. You know, you people are running by. You just go, hey. Sure. This guy stops running, and he just walks over. He goes, hey, I'm not registered. I was just doing it for fun. You went to King's Point? Whoa. And so now I'm like, I'm cold. My ward hurts. Yeah. Uh, my wife is dead somewhere in the woods. Sure. I just wanted to go, hey, King's Point. I know King's Point. Uh, now you got a convo. Go stop and chat. Well, and I feel bad. He stopped running the race to talk King's Point. And I'm like, oh, I didn't go there. Oh. And he's like, oh, you yelled King's Point. And I was like, well, I spent a lot of time there back in the class of 03. I was drunk and, and I would go there and get hammered. Sure. 01, 02, 03, back in the day. So I, I feel very. A kinship with Kings Point. Yes. But I, I didn't go there, and it was 20 years ago. I'm just an old man. And he's like, oh, all right. While he's talking, his buddy walks up and goes, hey, Mike, how come you stopped running? And he goes, well, this guy yelled out. And this his buddy goes, Joe List? Oh. What the fuck? I'm a huge Tuesday. Whoa. Holy shit. So this guy 
is just walking. He finished the race. He's walking. He sees his buddy. He's yeah. like, why aren't you running? He's yeah. like, I'm talking to this guy. And then he turns, and this guy is the guy that That's he listens to. Cuckoo bananas. So now I'm taking a photo, and King's Point guy's like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> so he just stopped running a race to talk King's Point with a guy who didn't go to King's yes. Point, but to his buddy's perspective is a celebrity. That's hilarious. It was wild. Damn, that's a mishmash of events there. So that was fun. So I did the race, did well. It was fun. Got Sarah. Then we go, get the baby, pack him up, get my dad, get my nephew. We all go to the game. It's fun. And the baby, it was chilly, but you throw blankets on him and a hat. We live in New York. What are you going to do? There you go. It's cold. Saw my old track coach, and uh, it's fun. You go see old buddies, and you watch the team. And uh, I'm a big, I believe in these traditions. You yes. got to go to the fucking thing that you go to. It, it's nice. It's sad when a tradition breaks. You know, when people just stop doing a thing, you're like, oh, we're not going to go do the Macy's Day Parade. You're like, what? After all those years, 100 years, all those memories, all those photos, Kaput. And at some point, there's a last time for all these things. And you're like, right. oh, I used to go to the game every year, and now I don't. And I don't. I didn't even consciously yeah, decide that. Yeah, yeah. Sad. And the pep rally. I, it's, it, I, I can't express how genuinely upset I am that the pep rally is not a fun thing yeah, anymore. It's a bummer. I mean, things are shifting. The, 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 the social media is up, and the hangs are down. Because it was like a, a pride, and it was fun. I mean... Forget, even if you didn't like sports, it was fun to go and get dressed up and sing and dance. Yeah. And it was exciting. It was just, uh, you felt the spirit and pride, and uh, it makes me sad. It's also a bummer because there's no one to blame it on. Like, something's like, well, that was problematic, so we had to get rid of it. And you're like, all right, well, fuck you, you queef, you, 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 you policeman, whatever. And now it's just like, yeah, we just didn't feel like it. Like That's even worse. Well, I think I think they're like, ah, that's dumb. That's ah. stupid. And that's like, if... if all of a sudden, uh, at college football games, they're like, ah, band. They're yeah. blowing horns. That's stupid. Well, am I an idiot? Because I feel similarly about this Ozembic thing. What's to that? The Ozembic's this shot all these kids are taking that makes you oh, lose right, weight. Oh, right, right, right. The fat people thing. Yeah. So I'm like, I get it. It's a quick fix, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, you should just have to do it. I don't right. know if it's good for the for the soul, for the body, for the, the psyche to just be able to melt that away, eat whatever you want. I don't know. To me, that, that feels like a trouble's a rumbling. It doesn't seem good, but I heard some... I was listening to some podcast, I forget which one, that they said Ozempic, it's not just to like make you less... It makes you want to eat less, and it's literally to treat Diabetics. But it's like, it, it, it stops any addiction. Like, if you're in your oh, phone, really? you could do oh. Ozempic, and I, I don't know, when you shoot it, you say phone or whatever, <laughs> or there's a different flavor. Yeah. But it helps you with craving. That's the word I was looking craving. for. Craving. It prevents mm. craving or stops craving. That's what I heard on a podcast, and I don't know whose podcast it was. I know, I know it, 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 it lowers Bill Maher's show. intake of food, and, and it helps with booze as well, but I don't know about a phone. I, I, I think mean, it's craving. Give so it a if, goof. if it works for food and drink, maybe it works for phone. I was yeah. thinking maybe you're thinking about are you garbage because Foley just went on it recently and they talk yeah. about it all the time. Really? Yeah. No, I, 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 I look. I got like those guys, but I don't listen to the show. Yeah, no one does. But <laughs> Foley is a great egg, and 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 he's a big dude, and he smokes and eats horribly. He, he drank like eleven Bloody Marys on a flight once. I was like, damn, that was impressive. But. <laughs> At some point, like I know girls who are on it, and they're pretty thin already, and they're just like, "Hey, I'm just nipping in the bud. I'm just trying to stay, keep my figure." And I'm like, "You should have to work on that, though." I, I don't know. It seems like a free lunch. I don't buy it. Well, taking drugs every day of any kind probably is not. Yeah, ideal. yeah, you'd think. What do you got, Chuck? It says Ozempic. This is from NPR. Ozempic is approved for treating diabetes and in some cases excess weight. But with the surge in popularity, doctors and patients have begun to notice a striking side effect. They appear to reduce people's cravings for alcohol, nicotine, and opioids. So I don't know if it's mm. phone stuff, but maybe chemicals. Or, that helps, or, too. Okay. okay, that's good. But the yeah. phone is chemically, I, I don't know. But I don't know how it works. But I forget what fucking podcast I was listening to. It was either, you know, Marr or... Uh, some, by the way, I was listening to Oliver Stone episode of Bill Marr. He's fucking an idiot. I fell asleep. I found it so boring. And he's not a good communicator. He's he a fucking moron. Interrupt, change the subject. He would go off. You know, it was super annoying. I was so disappointed. I was like, you're like, you suck. Yeah, he sucks. <laughs> but, uh-oh. Maybe you're right. Uh, by the way, I don't want to be right or wrong. I'm just telling you this is what I heard on a podcast. Right, right, uh, right. It's not me. It said the way that it works is that, uh, this is the doctor, she said... 
when we think about reward centers, it releases mm. dopamine. Mm. So what happens is when you do a certain activity, like eating, going on your cell phone, or drinking, when you think when you do it, dopamine surges. And so you think, I want to keep doing that, whether it's indulging in alcohol, nicotine, or, or even gambling, it says. And he said the way Ozempic works, it I decreases gambling. that surge, and therefore the desire for that activity is okay. decreased. Maybe it's, it's the best drug on the planet. I take it all back because phones are killing us. I can't. Think of what fucking podcast, but, but some, the person, the guest, or the host was a uh, guest, I think. You know what? It was on real time. Mm. It was on real time. The guy was saying, he's like, I think Ozempic is going to be bigger than AI. It's going to have Whoa. a bigger impact on society wow. than AI. Wow. Because it could fucking stop all addiction okay. from uh, whatever the fuck, uh, opiate crisis to um, phone addiction. Wow. Well, I... The only reason I push back on that is because I know a lady, we're pretty friendly, and she is like up her ass on the phone all day, and she's on Ozempic. So I don't know. Maybe it's... But that's what I mean. I'm like, I, how did, does the Ozempic... She's on it for weight. Yeah. Uh, but can you put... When you shoot it, do you I, turn it to the cell phone nodule? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe there's a cell phone uh, liquid. Yeah, give me the Instagram Ozempic. Right, right. <laughs> Give me the Samsung. I, I don't know, but maybe she works on her phone also, so that's why I, I don't know how it works. It. I'm not a fucking it. doctor or a scientist. I just play one on TV, but um, yeah. But, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. I'll do a water if I can. I'll take a nice water. Sure. It, Thanks. Yeah, you know what I did is uh, I go. I went to Chipotle early. I had some time to kill. Me too. Oh, shit. I should have hit you up. Yeah, damn. All right. Do you want to the, the bad one over here? I was at, no, by Soda's house. Okay, I went to this one. And, uh, you know, we're Chipotle in the city, blah, blah, blah. But after I eat Chipotle, I have to have a sweet. And the only meal. I need the tea. The only meal I have to, I need a cookie, I need a candy bar, I need something. Look who you're talking to. Exactly. But uh, at the the meal. Don't even, don't even cross my mind. Chipotle, there's something that's too salty. I don't know what it is. I need a sweet. The salt, you want a sweet. Yeah, I love the brownie after. I, I went no brownie today because I'm a fat fuck. But, uh -huh. um, well, I, I, I didn't know where to get my sweet. I didn't want to get a cookie. I felt guilty about it. Came up here, went to the coffee machine. <whistles> Hot chocolate. Oh. There it is right there. Had to have nice. it. I love an HC. Oh, Head HVAC. coach. Hey, hey, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Better Help. Oh, yeah, you've been so busy giving gifts to other people, you forgot to take care of yourself. Whether it's time to take a nap, treating yourself to a coffee, or getting started with therapy, give yourself some love this holiday season. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is the best. It's entirely online. Take a quick quiz to get matched with a licensed therapist. You can talk to whoever and whenever is convenient for you. Chat through video call, phone, or even by message. BetterHelp is designed to fit your lifestyle. I completely agree. One of the worst parts about therapy is getting there and then getting out. You know, you want to just knock it out. Now you can knock it out from home, from wherever you're at, your cubicle, your parents' house, the basement you're living in, whatever it is. Get on it, and there's no excuse because it's too convenient not to. If you switch therapists for any reason, you can easily swap at any time for no additional charge. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tuesdays. Get on it! Yo! This episode of Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Liquid IV. This time of year is insane. You're busy shopping for presents, you're hosting your family for dinner, and you're recovering from the office Christmas party. What a nightmare. You're going to need to stay hydrated, folks. I think you're probably drinking at every event you go to right now. Got to stay hydrated. Stock up on Liquid IV so you are ready for the holiday rush. It's now available in sugar-free. Studies every day how bad sugar is. I'm addicted to it. I need Ozempic. Liquid IV has three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus... Eight vitamins and nutrients to keep you going. With just one stick mixed with water, you'll be hydrated two times faster than just regular water alone. I love this stuff. I can't believe how much stuff they send to me. Oh, yeah. We sent it to uh, my uncle's fire department, I think. Ooh, I hope he got it. Oh, nice move. We we're supposed to be sending it anyways. I hope they're getting it. They loved it. They need it. Everyone I know wants it. We have so much. They're, they're so kind to send us so much. Everyone so I know is calling me, sending me emails, being like, let me get some of that liquid IV. Yes. I'm handing it out like Santa Claus, and I drink it myself. I love it. 
No artificial sweeteners, zero sugar, no gluten, dairy, soy, or GMOs. You're making a great choice for your health as well as your hydration. Grab your Liquid IV Hydration Multiplier, sugar-free, in bulk, nationwide at Costco's, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code TUESDAYS at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code TUESDAYS at liquidiv.com. Here, here. Hey, hey, folks. Tuesdays of Stories brought to you by Raycon. Love Raycon. I use it every day. When you're in the throes of the holiday season, you need to find some time to chill and be with yourself. Pop in a Raycon everyday earbud and relax. Raycon is known for their high quality and 32-hour battery life and comfortable in-ear fit. I love my Raycon everyday earbuds and never leave home without them. Within eight hours of playtime, crystal clear call quality and resistance to water and sweat. You can take these puppies anywhere. And this past year, Raycon expanded their entire business with the introduction of Raycon Power Tech and Raycon Home. Their durable Magic 180 charging cable provides hyperspeed charging for all of your devices and rotates 180 degrees. No matter what Raycon product you go with, you'll enjoy easy and free return guarantee, free shipping, and buy now, pay later options. Hurry now to buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays to get 50% off your entire Raycon order. Perfect for last-minute gifts or to ring in the new year. That's B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash Tuesdays and get 15% off Raycon products. Buy Raycon.com slash Tuesdays. Get on it. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Manscaped. (coughs) Smooth balls are the gift that keeps on giving, and Manscaped has got you covered with a fresh launch that's right on time. Oh, yeah. Their new performance package 5.0 includes the Lawn Mower 5.0, Ultra Body Trimmer, the Weed Whacker 2.0, mm. mm. Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, I use it every day, their Crop Soother Aftershave Lotion, and Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant. Folks, I am all over Manscaped. Manscaped rules. It comes in like such a nice package. This is a perfect uh, gift for a friend, a brother-in-law. A cousin. I, I got my brother-in-law in the uh, the old Secret Santa I'm not kidding. I'm getting them all manscaped all the time. This stuff rules. Great gift ideas. Time is now. Get it going. Your father will love it. Your father-in-law, your uncle, your dad, whoever. I said father and dad. They're all going to love it. The Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra does all the heavy lifting with two next-gen blade heads. It's even waterproof so you can knock out your shaving routine while you're in the shower. This set comes with two free gifts, a pair of comfy boxers and a travel bag, so you'll be prepared for anything. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code TUESDAYS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code TUESDAYS. Um, But yeah, anyways, Thanksgiving, I love it, but um, football game was fun, and we rode up with Karen Feehan, who's just the best. Love the Feehan. It was like a big... Road trip. I know she brought all this clothes. She she's number one. I mean, she's dominating the uh, the gift gang. Oh, really? Because she's bringing over designer shit, and she picks them right up wow. and licks his lips. And uh, yeah, she's first class. So we had a great time. I had Sarah in the back. I had Fian over here. The baby slept the whole way. He shit up his leg. So did she. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was it was a fucking great trip. It's fun to have a buddy in the ride yeah yeah it just that feels is nice. fun to be like you're coming over get over here at 7 30 a.m we'll go get the car i'll pick everybody up you get yes. in that car and you're like what's shit on everybody yeah and then you put the wife in the back so now you got a little uh, got a little action up front oh we held hands the whole way she has no idea there you go <laughs> got a hand job a real bobert yeah it was a good time so uh love the fee hand love thanksgiving no one goes to the pep rally my uncle brian i actually wrote that down that's embarrassing um <laughs> All right, I got a couple other things, but t- tell uh, me about Well, let me New tell Orleans. you about what we So we went down to the big NOLA, and, you know, it's 60 degrees down there right now. This is winter. Right. And, and it's fun. You got a T-shirt on and, and a Daisy Dukes and a, and a thong. And we go down, and my mom is a big foodie coos. I've said it a million times. She brought a paper menu. and for the I, house? At the, yeah, for the house for the meal. And I feel bad because- wow. My lady likes to cook, and she's pretty damn good at cooking. So she's like, what do I bring? And my mom's like- Hit the brakes, bitch tits. I got this. And so she's like, okay, okay. So we picked up a pie. 
Okay. And uh, I go, hey, look, I push back on mom. I go, hey, mom. She goes all in with this hoity-toity highfalutin meal. Mm -hmm. And I go, I want some trash. This is Thanksgiving. This is America. I want a little bit of green bean cast with the cream of mushroom. That's trash? Well, you know, compared to my mom. My mom's Uh, making like a fucking oyster Rockefeller stuffing with uh, oat milk and goat's blood. I see. You got to come to my house. You want some trash. Good. Trash it up, baby. Are you garbage? Put it right in my ass. So she brings the the, uh, cream bean casserole. We go get a pie from the bakery there. And we show up, and I got a hand to my mom, because my brother did a vegan Thanksgiving two years before, and it almost split the family up. I remember that. Brian Vegan. Yes. I mean, it's meat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it was, you know, the, the turkey was ice cold, the yams were racist, we did it all. But uh, my mom really went all out, and it was, it was gravy, it was rice, it was turkey, it was the whole thing. And I'll tell you this, you know, my family, we're, we're a little co-workery. I like to say, mm. you know, it's a lot of just sitting in silence and going, hmm, did you see that uh, Biden is now having migrants shipped to Chicago? And I go, hey, you know, Chicago, they uh, they sent back the migrants. That's how bad it was over there. Yep. And then, you know, you know how it goes. It's, it's like a corporate gig. It's tough. Yeah. So when I go, I, I used to just sit there and stew in my own anxiety and go, they hate me. I suck. I'm blowing it. I'm bombing. And I said, you know what? And I excused myself from the table. I got up, and I have two nieces. We wrestled for like an hour and a half. It was that's, great. That's the way you got to do it. You got to go to that kid's table. Because kids, listen, you can connect with them. Yes. They talk. They say interesting stuff. They the, say funny things. They're genuine. It's just a better situation. I mean, don't get me wrong. Every once in a while, they'll be like, your breath smells. Sure, sure. I'll take, I'll take a little abuse. But that- that's better than just getting stoned. Yeah, so I uh, played with the kids the whole time, and it's good because they live in Wisconsin now, so I got to connect with the kids, and I saw everybody looking over because they're going, Ma, he bit me, fuck her, blah, Jews, you know, and I'm punching these kids, and they're all like, what's going on over there? I'm like, you know what's going on over here is we're having a good time. You exactly. are off in adult hell. It's so funny you say that because uh, Sarah, when we were playing games, my house, my family, if you don't play a game, it's just uh-huh. silent. We're watching a game or we're playing a game. Okay. And everyone was laughing. And one of the kids, a particularly ornery kid, came out and he goes, you guys are too loud. And Sarah went, it's called fun. And everyone got a big laugh. Whoa, we really zinged them. It was pretty fun. Well, that's a wife right there. Yeah. Some of these kids need to be zung. Zing them up, I say. That's why there's no pep rally. They got no zing in them. There's no zing, exactly. And uh, I can tell other stories, but I don't want to speak out of school class college. oh oh really that she did when she hit a kid no no but you oh. know you, I, 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 I'm, I'm, all, I'm a boomer i tell these kids i'm like yeah, you can't fucking lay on the floor that we're hanging out <laughs> you know what i mean yes, People, they're all, yes. they're, these tiktok they're entitled. Is just, I'm, I'm a fucking boomer this uh, tiktok is destroying our society there's literally teenagers napping on the couch on the floor on oh, the chairs take the whole thing i'm like go to bed yeah, get out of here. You have to sign it. And they're like, well, you know, I'm, whatever. And I'm like, when I was in high school. I fucking wasn't home. I would hang out all yes. night and, and went, I ran seven miles a day and did the home. I didn't do homework, but whatever. Same. But well, I went to bed from 1130 to 730. And so you're spry. I'm like, yes. you can't be sleeping at a party. It's It's odd. You can pass out drunk at a party. That's cool. Yeah, you sure. You can't just go to bed at the party. It's, no. it's obnoxious. I'm with you. And thank God for my brother. He doesn't allow phones or anything. So he's cracking the whip. He's like, hey, shut up. You're too loud. Quiet down. Don't run. Like, he's doing all the, the dad stuff. And I get to go in there and go, hey, you I'm puncturing this, the tits. We might set a record for F-bombs yeah. on this episode. <laughs> Cut that. We're at three. Yeah, so uh, we had a great time, and I used to, you know, as I say, I used to dwell on that. Like, I'm bombing at the table. I got nothing. And I would say something like, hey, how about Napoleon? That looks good. And they're like, well, in 1918, Napoleon killed his uncle. And you're like, oh, he wasn't even alive then. What are you doing to me? How, how did you make this boring? Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. But it's exciting, the family. That's yeah. why the baby is nice because it gives everybody something. You can be like, oh, yes. yeah, you got the baby stories. So true. Yeah, he does this, he does that, and yada, yada, boobly boo, dingity well, ding. At least your family, you'll play a game or you'll watch a game. I don't even care about football, but I'm like, put something on so we have a focal. Because right now it's all on us. There's eight people around a dinner table going, uh, hmm, well, uh, what, what, uh, what, what about Putin? He's no joke. Yeah. Well, you know, he's on a horse. 
a lot of drones. And I go, hey, you know, uh, my friend's got a drone. He flew it up and it crashed right into the car. <laughs> it was crazy. And they go, yeah, and Zelensky, he's, he's going to borrow some more money. I'm like, ah! It's like being in a museum. Yeah, that's tough. And yeah, we have that. It's, we have a lot of silence. Just really? A lot of si- or looking at the phone. Just everyone kind of looking at oh, a phone. Oh, we don't do phone. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah, if I pull the phone out, there's, there's some, some stink guy. Which is funny because I got Sam texting me. He does the Mark, Mark, and I'm like, I'm at Thanksgiving. I'm with my family. What the fuck, oh, man? Geez. I'm out on Thanksgiving. It's five days. That's the Monday all day. I'm like, sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. My family, it's like a hole I dive into. I can't even get any outside world, which is something I need to work on. I don't know. I, thought I might be healthier. No, but I should take a half an hour a day. Sure, just return sure. The because it feels like healthy. But then Sunday, I start starts weighing on yes, me. Monday, I start yes. going. I have fourteen fucking texts from different people. Right, right. And but, some of them are just happy Thanksgiving, but you're right. you're in, encompassed in the family, whatever. Yeah, well, nine of them are happy Thanksgiving. You go, who the fuck is this? Oh, I get that all the time. Yeah, I gotta start. I gotta start saving numbers because I got a million like 908-302-205 area code. I'm like. No idea. This could be some guy I met in, in uh, Poughkeepsie in 88. Well, some of them are dialogue. Some of them, I'm like, I'm having a conversation. <laughs> yes, yes. We had this last week. I you helped too. Because I'm like, I don't even know who this is. I'm talking, sub- I'm not giving advice. Oh, Literally. Wow. I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm like, well, you got to read the fourth step and uh, uh, work with your sponsor. I'm like, I don't know who this person is. Chat with Lindsay Lohan over here. Who I, the hell knows? I wish. Yeah, she's cute. Underrated cute lady, by the way. Or oh, pretty lady. Dude, well, I mean, Chuck just, like his boner just flipped the table because... Right? She doesn't come up in the pretty lady list. Well, Mean Streets, forget about it. Mean, mean Streets. Streets. Great film. <laughs> mean Girls. Oh, okay. Like, wow, two great films with Mean in front of it. Oh, yeah. Mean yeah. Joe Green. Mean Mean Streets, Mean Girls. Mean Girls, underrated great film, comedy. underrated comedy, Tina and Fey. Lindsay Lohan, my goodness. Killed gravy. It. She's like a hot high school chick, which is not hard. And Rachel McAdams. And oh. hard. I mean, that, that dance number. Oh. Forget about it. I mean, that Ooh, was right up there in the Spank Bank. Yeah, that's a great comedy. Doesn't get its due. Yeah, great, great film. Good film. Very yeah. funny. Uh, so then, how about this? So we got two shows. Oh, I got two shows. One in Mobile, Alabama. Yes. One in New Orleans, mm, Louisiana. Now, yes. I'm now good at this. I had to rent a car. Because oh, Mobile Jesus. is two hours away. Okay. And I didn't want to borrow the parents' car because that's the whole thing. Because then they guilt trip you. It's like the mob. They go, well, you can use our car. And I go, oh, thanks. And then the whole time they're texting me like, well, we don't have a car, so you're going to have to uh, pick up milk and, and bring it back here. And you're like, God, Jesus. Mm. But have you ever had this? So I fucked up. I didn't rent a car. I didn't I didn't uh, arrange it. What do you call it? Reserve. Reserve. Army Reserve. Yeah. So I go... Hey, agent, can you get me a car? I'm an idiot. So I'm in the mid-flight. I land. He goes, everything's booked. It's Thanksgiving week, you chooch. But I got you. I got you one. And I go, oh, great. He goes, uh, it's right here. And I go, ATC. And it's not Hertz, not Avis, not uh, Enterprise. I'm like, what the hell is ATC? It must be some new uh, All hip- comedy. Yeah, it must be some new thing. So I get in the rental car shuttle, which I already hate doing. Don't you, you, you land, and now you're on a shuttle. It's just a bummer. You want to land and go home. Of course. The shuttle is a real cunt in the ass. So I land. You get on the shuttle. I get to the rental car or whatever, which is a a bitch of a drive. You're in there with a bunch of families. There's kids screaming. You finally get there. It's like a John Hughes film. And you go, hey, man. It's a guy in a vest. What's ATC? Is that over here? Is that a new thing? Is that a a lot of car, you know, or something? He's like, "Uh, oh, ATC. Never heard of it. Ask Roger. Hey, Roger, he's got one tooth, fat guy. Hey, Roger, what's up with ATC? He goes, I don't know that one. And he goes, all right, let me Google ATC. Oh, 10 miles away. It's a random mom-and-pop rental car. Uh, now so, you got to rent a car to get to the car rental. Exactly. So now i got to get an Uber to the car rental. You finally get there, and this is when all the shit hits the fan. You know, hours of going by. You know, you're just like, I want to get home. I want to get to the Airbnb. Let's get moving. And the guy goes, okay, this place is a dive. It's a shithole. There's cobwebs, broken glass. And he goes, uh, all right, going to need your ID. Great. License. Credit card. Great, great. Now, who's your insurance? And I go, oof, I don't know. And he goes, you don't know about your insurance? I go, I never get insurance. Just give me the car. I'll pay for any damage I do. He goes, 
hey, we ain't Hertz. Mm. You got to have insurance. We can't just give you a car. And I go, I don't know if I have insurance. And he goes, well, call your provider. And I go, I don't know my provider. And he goes, you got to know your provider. So I go through all my emails. I type in insurance on the search bar. <laughs> Turns out I have Geico. Yeah. By I, the way, I think you could just say Geico. No, nah, they need the plan. They need the number. They need something. I don't think so. They never asked me for anything. They just typed Geico. Really? Yeah, I think so. Well, I said Geico, and he goes, huh, do you have the app? And I go, yeah, but the app was like, it had a little weird cloud around it from not being hit. Oh, yeah, you I know, know the what cloud. I, know the cloud? Of course. I'm all cloud over here, by uh, the way. It saves you uh, space, Ex- the cloud. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, all right. Cloudy day. So I go, all right, now I got to reload Geico. Then I open it up, and it says, what's your password? And you want to just go, ah, and throw the phone out the window. Mm-hmm. But I go, all right, let me figure out the password. I figured out the password after 20 minutes. Then he goes, all right, well, what's your plan? And I hit it, and it says, oh, man, you're fucked, or something like that. Uh, like the Geico app said, you're done, kill yourself. And I said, all right. So I show him that, and he goes, hey, why don't you go ahead and call him? So that was the day before Thanksgiving. I'm calling Geico in a shithole uh, Enterprise ATC, and a guy answers, and I go, "Hey, can I re up my insurance?" And he goes, "No, we won't have you." And I go, "What do you mean?" He's like, "We can't have you. You have a horrible history." Blah blah. blah. <laughs> and I was like, "Wait, what?" And I was like, "Well, just re up it." And he's like, "We want. We don't want your business." And I was like, "Oh my god!" So I give the phone to the guy, and he's like, "Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh." <laughs> Oh, so that guy just he just took my phone and put it in the furnace. And then uh, I go, come on, man. Day before Thanksgiving. We've been here an hour and a half. She's the wife is sleeping. She's on the floor like an eight year old list. And uh, I go, how about this? Put five grand on my card like as a deposit. If I don't wreck it, just give me the five grand back. And he kind of goes. And he does the look around for any other employees, and he goes, all right, fuck it. And he gave he gave me the charger. Wow. So it worked. But, I mean, can't you just get insurance through them? Can't you pay for their daily plan or whatever the fuck? They didn't do a plan. They don't have the infrastructure. The no plan? <laughs> they're mom and pop. They're like a hole in the wall. Mom and pop doesn't offer insurance? No, no, because they, they don't have the money. Like, if... if if I wreck it, they have to pay. Ah, wreck it, Ralph. Yeah, so they have nothing. So I go, all right. So I gave the guy five thousand dollars. I got the keys. I uh, bumped it on the way out. I hit like a, a telephone pole, but it was all right. He came out. He's like, and I was like, ah, oh, we're good. And I, I hauled ass. The whole thing took about four and a half hours from the first shuttle to the Uber to the whole thing. Probably like three hours. But I just. Driving away angry, fucking Geico, piece of shit, that goddamn gecko motherfucker. So the wife's like, all right, take it easy, shut up. And we get to the Airbnb. It was great. We had sex. Oh, I love sex. I haven't had sex in five weeks. Whoa, it's like high school. <laughs> it's brutal. Jesus. Uh, I feel like a prize fighter. <laughs> it's like uh, the old Joe Frazier quote. That must yes. be angry. It makes you evil. I, that's how I feel right now. Do you feel pumped up? I want to fight everybody. I haven't slept or fucked in fucking six weeks. Holy shit. You're going to shoot up a school. Uh, I'm, I'm dying. But uh, it's funny. The insurance, I think about that all the time because I never had a credit card. They wouldn't let you rent a car. For years, I couldn't rent a car because yes. I had no credit. Yes. And it was the same thing because I had money but no credit card. And right. I always felt that way. I was like, I'll give you three grand. I, I yeah. have, I'll, I'll, I'll fucking buy a car. Just let me go. It's like that Mitch Hedberg joke where he goes to a hotel and they go, you got to put a credit card down. And he goes... I have cash. I got a wads and wads of cash. I'll just give it to you. And they're like, need a credit card. He's like, you know the credit card represents this. Right. That was the big joke. Yeah. Yeah, it's frustrating. Not life great. Is, life is gay. But uh, life is gay, but we drove to Mobile. Two-hour drive on a, on a, on a comedy gig is, is ideal. It's like the perfect yeah. amount of time. Three hours is a little much. One hour is not a, really a road trip. Mm-hmm. Two-hour, you get to see some stuff. You get to get to a good conversation. You get a couple songs in. You know, uh, you stick an eye of the tiger at the top of your lungs. We get to Mobile, which is a New Orleans ripoff, by the way. It's just like a smaller New Orleans mm-hmm. without the the fun stuff. And I we did a 2,000-seat theater. We sold 800 tickets. And, boy, is that weird. Come on, 800? I think it was like 900, but it was half right. full, basically. Yeah, well, Alabama, these are tough markets. It's like a different country. Isn't that weird? Like Mississippi. Yes. No, I've never done. I've never stepped foot in Mississippi. Right. In my whole life. It's a whole world down there. There's, there's families and couples and kids. Of course, but we're not hit. Like they don't get 
the bonfire in Mississippi. Right, it's right. It's so weird. Well, they have the internet, I think. But I think they have Bill Engvall, uh, right? Like those markets. Or uh, who's the lady that's killing it? Leanne Morgan. Yeah, I think they have Leanne Morgan. They don't have fucking Phil Hanley in Mississippi. No, no, they do not have Hanley. see his sweater, they would fucking chop his legs off and take his sweater. <laughs> That's true, but I will say the cool thing is you go to Mobile, you're the town. The whole, like, the suburbs come in, the country comes in to come see your bullshit show. And that's kind of fun. Bless you. And they go. Uh, we had we had Louie here a month ago or a year ago. We had I remember Nate Bargatze coming through here. I remember Burt Kreischer coming through here, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I bet Nate does well there. Yeah, Nate. it's tough. Those are tough uh, markets. Alabama and like Wyoming, Montana. Yeah, Montana has more, I guess. Well, I had the fun thing too. I was just strolling around town, getting a feel for it. I uh, my premise walk, and I go into a vintage shop, and the other. It's the South, so they're real chatty there. They go, ding da ding ding Hey, partner, what are you doing here? I go, ah, I'm just browsing. Uh, if you need help with anything, better. Uh, well, what are you in town for? You live here? No, oh, I don't geez. live here. I'm in town. I'm going to a comedy show. And they go, oh, who are you seeing? And this is always a risk. I go, I'm going to see this guy, Mark Norman. And they go, yeah, never heard of him. My friend's coming in town to see him. He's the cash cab guy, right? And I go, no, 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 not a cat. That's Ben Bailey. And he goes, nah, pretty sure it's Mark Norman. I go, big comedy fan, know a lot about comedy. I think it's not Mark Norman, it's Ben Bailey. And he goes, going to have to fight you on this one. And so now I'm in a back and forth with the fucking uh, hillbilly vintage guy. Well, maybe he knows something you don't. Maybe he's in the industry. <laughs> maybe you're about to, they're about to reboot it with you. Yeah, maybe. But they don't even have cabs down there or cash. So I don't know what the hell he's talking about. But I ended up buying a jacket. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, yeah. And then you wear it at the show that night. It's kind of fun. But uh, he's like, yeah, my friend's coming to see that guy. I never heard of him. You know, not my cup. Does a lot of that. Uh, did you ever notice? You know, the Jews, the blacks, whatever. Yeah, it strikes me a lot of people are doing that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but boy, we uh, we hightailed it right out of there after that. Did I ever tell nice you my? I, I'm sure I did the uh, web series I did or the TV show I did at the time. Web series now, but DePaulo and I came up with because we'd always go to the mall together before the shows, mm. and the the idea is that. That each comedian picks out the other comedian's outfit for that night. Oh, fun! That's fun. As you a goof go, or as a that's real? A, as thing. a goof, a gag. Okay. So you know, I go up. I, you can't go too crazy because sure. he's picking out your outfit also. Aha! Uh-huh. So he goes. I go up. I come out with a tube top and heels or whatever, and he's got to go out there with a Fubu <laughs> jersey, <laughs> which he'd be more upset. <laughs> That's true. Oh, we got to clean this place, buddy. Nah, it's let, it, let it build. Yeah. Well, I think we, it's like we're doing a standoff with Chuck. Like, which, who's going to clean this? Yeah, it's like roommates in college. It's it, either he's cleaning it or we're cleaning it. Neither one wants to break. And uh, They will rotate. One day I'll do it, then you do I'll, it, I'll then he it. does it. I cleaned a little last time. I threw, I had an arm full of stuff. We talked about this on the last episode, but half the stuff has dicks and pussies on it. Yeah. But I had an arm full of shit. You yeah, want to get rid of, I'll get rid of everything. I just don't know what you want to keep. Well, I want to keep I some stuff. Either. The big poster, I want to keep. Okay. And some of the sentiment. We got to keep Th- all this. This we is great. Figure out how to hang this. This stuff. is the hot spot right here. Anything but- over here is a keeper. I do this with my uh, my wife all the time because we have a real uh, Mexican standoff, as you say. With the uh, she doesn't clean shit, but I clean incrementally, which you get no credit for. Mm. I clean. Let's say I clean every day for a year. That's three hundred sixty five table cleanings. I'm doing. She does it once, and she's like, what are you talking about? I cleaned yesterday. I go, I cleaned every month of the year, uh-huh. but it's incremental. You get no love for the increment. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, she, my wife does a lot more cleaning, and, uh, you know, I go out. I get the meals. I cook. I do that, too. I don't too. cook. I don't know why I, I said cook. I cook. Yeah. I don't I get meals. Yeah. I pay for things. I, get, I do Uber Eats. But my wife and I, we're on different pages. She wants to save my, She makes a little thing at home, and I just get a $75 the spaghetti and meatballs because I'm an asshole. Well, that Uber Eats rakes you. On it's the crazy. Price. No, it's it's like the Gullman joke. It only adds up if you add it up. I don't look. Right. And then I get an email and I, I drop the phone. Yeah. Because it's like I just paid fifty nine dollars for uh, three raviolis and a, and a hand salad. Right. Hand right. Salad. <laughs> salad. Boy, you're off the rocker. I'm not well. Reservation. Yeah. Ham sandwich. I think is what I was thinking. Oh, okay, okay. And then I went with hand salad. <laughs> I'm not good. It's it's, Woo, it's terrible. How you doing? All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Well, let me just say this, and I'll throw it back to the hand salad over there. But this uh, is spectacular. I mean, we really got to hang this. <laughs> the I mean, beauty. This clock and this. 
I mean, this is better than anything I own. <laughs> you know what? I'll put a. It's I'll the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. I took that. Very nice. I'll put I'll put a little table in between you guys, and you can have. Ooh, you can that's put your, good. You can put your water there. That's we can put the clock good. and everything. But we got, all we need is a thumbtack right there. You took that. Yeah. Oh wow, that's, that's from the impressive. Wedding. Yeah, yeah, I know that. It's from the video. <laughs> it's from the video though. Oh, the video. That's what I meant. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, that is I really see. something else. Yeah. And then it says, uh, "Thanks to the Queefs, Joey." Hey, wait, Joey. There you go. Yeah, that is really, sp- and the and the clock. Forget about it. That's the nicest thing I own. Yeah, the clock's but, uh, nice. Yeah. Anyways, behind this, it'll stay. There you go. And then the ass man, we love. Love the ass man. This is great too. The photo thing with yep. George, George's boss. I'm aware. Kruger. Uh, <laughs> you've lost a lot of hair. Let me uh, just check the text to make sure my wife didn't pass okay. away. No, nope, it's all good. So then we go back to New Orleans. Uh-huh. You lose the Airbnb, but the we did the Orpheum Theater in New Orleans, which is a nice step up for me. I usually do the Joy, which is like an old movie theater I went to as a kid that had dollar shows. Wow. You ever have that? The dollar cinema? Um, yeah. yeah. It was called the Cameo. Oh. Cameo Cinema in Weymouth. Okay. Yeah, it was a good good for a kid. We'd see Free Willy. Hey, his his four quarters. Blow me. Lori Petty, wetsuit. Oh uh, love uh, Petty. Tom Petty. So same body. So uh <laughs> different face. Oh yeah. Both dead? Lori's alive, I, I think. think. Lori's still cooking. Saw Tom Petty right before he died. Good for you. Wedding gift, Mari. Propofol, I believe. Yeah. That's what got Michael Jackson. Yeah, and no, I thought comes. he had like a heart did he O D? I thought he was on stuff. I thought his heart just gave up. It was the heart, but I think the pills add in or, you know, factor in. I can't remember. So, Ah, do the Orpheum. Uh, Same night as Bayou Classic, Hmm. which uh, I don't know if you know what that is. No. That's where Rambling and Southern play. They're two historic black colleges. Ah. So the whole city is just uh, a buzz with rims, hip-hop, and uh, occasional shooting. Yeah, that's... uh, and I'm not saying that Terrifying. in an opinion piece. I'm saying that's how it goes every year. Uh-huh. So uh, it gets like it's a little hairy, but it's a great time. A lot of daiquiris, a lot of ice and bling and sneakers and fun. And everybody's decked out. And so I got a lot of messages like, hey, man, I want to come to your show, but I ain't going downtown during Bayou Classic. You're oh, crazy. Jesus. Well, it's not, it's not even a racial thing. It's just like it's mayhem. No, I meant Jesus. That sucks. Yeah, it sucks. But your agents don't know about the Bayou class. No. So they that's know nothing. That's not on them, I guess. I guess that's on me. I should have pointed that out. I don't know. But we had a good show. Rich Aronovich opened. Oh, I love Rich. He's a local that's Louisiana a boy. Guy. He's great from guy. Louisiana? Yeah. What? Louisiana Jew. Rich Aronovich is from Louisiana? He's from Lakeview, a suburb of New Orleans. I had no idea. I oh, thought he yeah. was a Jersey guy. No, no. Big floppy haired Hebe from Nola. That's wild because because I just I, I first of all I did my first road gig with him and Joey Gay ever oh, in wow. Secaucus, New Jersey. Wow. In two thousand one. Uh, or maybe two thousand two. And uh he's he's a he's a Jew and he's got New York energy. Yes. He's crazy. He ah, does. He's, he's a little Kramery. So uh fucking hilarious guy. Really killed. I'm a killed. big Aronovich guy. Killed up top. And it's so funny because I got all my jack off buddies there. You know, these are all high school meatheads, whatever, and he's in there and I could tell he was just like, This ain't my speed. You right. know, and I'm like, it ain't really mine either, but you see these guys once a year, so you be let them in the green room. I am blown away. That uh, he's, this is so. This is the weird thing about Louisiana, New Orleans, because I feel like you and Richard Aronovich have no feel of New Orleans to me. Like, there's no uh-huh. like, well, I know, oh, no, yeah. I have never. Well, it's just, you could say the same with Bean Town. Everybody thinks it's going to be a uh, Matt Damon. Like, how do you like them apples? Pock the car, you know. I, I feel like. You know, Josh Gondelman doesn't reek of Beantown. That's true, but Beantown also has a very intellectual true. aspect to true. it. It has, a, you know, Harvard, MIT, and all that shit, so he's more of that ilk. Mm-hmm. I just don't, uh, like, there's, I mean, you're never like, wow, <laughs> never, wow. Yeah, well, we don't oh, have, whatever. we have the intellectual, I wouldn't say intellectual, but we got a little upper crust over there in Louisiana as well. It's like, it's like same with New York City. Ah, uh, forget about it. Right. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, it's the Sam Marill. He's right. got big eyebrows and a, and a dreidel. Yeah, I suppose so. But uh, yeah, Aronovich, he just feels so northeast to he me. He does feel very northeast. I, I completely, I think it's the neuroticism. Yes. 
But he killed it. He crushed. Everybody was blown away. Like, who was that opener? We didn't even we we left during you. He's a hot hot ticket. Yeah, crushed it. And then uh, of course we got drunk after and uh, just had a great time. But you still have that that New Orleans hometown. It is scary because a New Orleans it's not really a comedy town. And if it ain't funny, they don't give it to you. Right. There's no giving it up in New Orleans. It's like Boston. Yes. I'm always saying Boston and New Orleans feel very similar. You think so? Well, we've talked about the accent is sort of similar. Sure, sure. With the ahs and the, or, the adding ours and dropping ours. Yeah. And uh, well, there's drinking, Catholicism, drinking. parishes. Yes, yes sports. Um, We're big on the football. It's the only two cities where people talk about a parish. True. And, very uh, Catholic city. And then their own holiday, their own tradition Mardi kind Gras. of thing. And... Um, we got some food. You got a clam chowder. We got a gumbo. Maybe there's something there. Yeah, I think both cities claim the oldest bar or restaurant. Oh, thing. yeah. And uh, what was the one, the other thing that you said that started this whole topic? Uh... Uh, uh, the you said something that was like, hey, that's similar to Boston. Oh, oh the, the non-comedy. Yeah. Well, like well you, the you're com- all comedy. But the comedy, the crowds are like, I don't give a fuck about this. Yes. You got to really, <laughs> yes. you better work for it. There's you no work like, for it. Well, we don't care. We're just laughing. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of, when I started comedy, like a lot of my friends were like, you? Right. We're all funnier than you. And I'm like, I know, but you're not going to sit down and write it. Right. So, yeah. So it's a tough, tough nugget. And you know, you have those in your act. I got like, this joke kills, but this is kind of like a B joke. I'll put it between a killer and a, and a, and a another killer. Mm-hmm. This B, and the B, the kill joke will get a laugh. The B will bomb. And then they, another, the next joke will hit, right? Because they don't give, they don't fuck with a B. Or like that wasn't. If it's not good, it's not good. If something's funny, it's funny. Yeah, we're in Cleveland. They'll be like, yeah, we'll give you like a ha. Huh. We'll yeah. give you a uh, what do you call that a uh, a chuckle? Yeah, well, a what it's, it's a we know courtesy. that courtesy. See, you're still around. Look yeah, at baby, that. still got it. Yes, sir. So yeah, they'll give you a courtesy, but there ain't no courtesy. There's a curtsy, but no mm-hmm. courtesy. And uh, Courtesy is my drug dealer. You know Courtesy? I don't know Courtesy. Uh, Sounds like an AA friend. (laughs) Courtesy. (laughs) And uh, Uh, Bob J. Yeah. So, uh, and AI. But... (laughs) We uh we, we left there. We go straight to the bar, and boy, did we! I mean, it was like old times. It was bad. Then the flight was the next day, and that was a that was a mistake. Yeah, I hate the next day flight. Oh yeah, I uh I don't remember how I got to the hotel. I don't remember how we stayed at the Ace Hotel. Hey. Yeah, very sexy in there. I love an Ace. Yeah, Ace hole and uh, Ace in the hole, but. Yeah, then I woke up, 8.30, and I was like, oh, I remember why I stopped blacking out. Ace 30. Hell. Huh? <laughs> I said, Ace 30. <laughs> <laughs> and then we flew out of there. Boy, you know what? The, uh, we, we went to the New Orleans airport, obviously, to fly to Newark. Mm-hmm. And I go, all right, our flight boards in seven minutes. Holy shit, there's a lounge here. I didn't know there was a lounge at the airport. I didn't either. In New Orleans. Must be new. So I go, let's go to the lounge. And I was like, ah, I wish we had known this. We just sat around for like a half hour. So you go to the lounge and we're like shoving our faces. And then this is how sad me and the wife are, but this is why we're meant to be together. We shove our faces. We wait too long. We get on the flight. We have to check our bags. Ah. Hate the check bag. Get on the flight. Land in New Orleans. We go, well, our bags are checked. We might as well go to the lounge in Newark to wait to and eat more. The bags will be taking a while anyway. Sure. So we spent too much time in the lounge. Went to get the bags. They were gone. Come on. They got well. They didn't get stolen, but the the, the United will scoop them up and they put them in the, and put them in their own pile. So we had to go in the pile and sift, and then go. No, I swear to God, that's mine. Like, how do we know it's yours? And I'm like, well, it says Seinfeld is my hero <laughs> on there, you know. So we got the bags out finally. Then we went home. It always feels like Schindler's List when you see that yes, pile of bags. Yes. You're like, oh, it belonged to somebody. Goodbye, Jews. Oh boy, got it. That's an emotion. Not really. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I really hogged there. No, no, it's glad I'm glad to hear all of it. It's so hard to come back after holidays. No matter when you leave, if you leave Sunday morning, Monday morning, it's just hard to go back to life. Yeah, I had the real Sunday scaries last night. Mm. Wait, last same? night, Tuesday, it's fucking Wednesday. No, it's Jeez. Tuesday. I don't oh, know what Tuesday. Day it is. I don't either. I can't remember. It's Tuesday, December 11th. Oh right, absolutely yes, horrible tragedy. 
12, 11. Yeah. But uh, yeah. isn't that weird? We got Christmas right around the corner. This is this is that wacky time of year. I always say it's like, uh, you know when you put your two weeks notice in at a job? Sort it's, of. So the last two weeks you just kind of dick off? Yeah. That feels like this of the year. Feels like that last two weeks. Yeah. Just like, ah, fuck you. I'm out. I'm shitting myself. No, it's hard. And this year is nice because the baby, I don't really have much. Uh-huh. And I got my friend Erica's coming to town for a week, which is nice. So it feels like a vacation. Before the vacation, I have one fucking like corporate gig. Oh, nice. Another um, one. And just, uh, you know, podcasts and stuff. But it's not, I got, I got little going on, which yeah. is nice because you have the, it's like senioritis. Senioritis. You didn't have senioritis there? What's that now? Senioritis is the same thing, but like with your senior year, oh. towards the end of the year, you're like, I'm not doing homework, I'm not doing tests, and you're like, you're failing. Right. You're failing <laughs> right. all your classes. You're yeah. like, I know, but I'm a senior. You got a Hawaiian care. shirt and flip flops and a exactly. dick Exactly. Dick off. Vladimir Dick off. <laughs> uh, let me tell you this real quick. Please. And um, I, I got two little things, but last night, you know me, still the same old G, but I've been low key, and I, I talk about this a lot. And I, I'm a boomer. I'm a conservative boomer now. I'm voting for Trump. I got a big, long red tie. He's number one. Oh, yeah. Put some scotch tape on the back. I just, uh, these scooter, the the, mo- the delivery ah. people, and I'm part of the problem because I get Uber Eats three times a day. Sure. But if you don't live in New York, maybe you're in a different city, all the delivery guys, they ride little moped things, yep, yep. and they're fucking completely lawless. They yes. drive up the sidewalk, through red lights, across crosswalks. And I'm going to sound like a bad guy, and I try to be a Buddhist and a program guy and all this stuff. But when I see people riding their scooters up the sidewalk, they run red lights. They just don't stop at red lights. No. I literally root for them to get fucking (laughs) sideswiped, hit by a car. Yeah. And I I have fantasies of jogging over, leaning down, and being like, that's why you fucking don't run red lights, you piece of shit. And then take that meal while you're at it. Because they're, that's not bad. Because they're endangering, we're living in a society. Right. And it, it gets more and more lawless. I'm telling you, if you don't live in New York, it's all the time. Every yeah. time, and I, I've, I've talked about this before, I argue with Sarah because we'll be walking. I'm like, no, stay two abreast. Make this guy get on the fucking uh, street because she'll move out of the way. And I'm literally, I'm like doing this on yeah, sidewalks. Yeah, good. I hate it. And well, they, they will get hit eventually. They, it, it can't last. They all run through red lights. So last night, I'm walking to uh, Starbucks, of course, to. Get a tea and get away for a moment. Yeah. And as I'm walking, I wa- I see it's dark because it gets dark at fucking 11, uh, whatever, 3.30. Yeah. I'm trying to exaggerate, and then I realized 11's too early or right. 11 p.m. It would always too be too late. Dark. Yeah. My well, brain you, sucks. You caught it. You caught it. I'm gay. So I see like a single headlight, one headlight, Jacob one Dylan. Headlight. It's coming down the this side of the row. He's just whipping down, and I watch this guy. Go up the same way, but oh. through a red light. And this guy's just coming down the wrong side of the road, also running a red light. And they, they didn't crash, crash, but they ran like, and oh. they hit the front tires. And it wasn't quite what I wanted, but it was enough that I'm like, yes, yes, yes more of this. Justice is served. You just want to see people go, oh, shit. And yeah. hopefully... Because the, the city's never going to ticket it, but no. if I ran for mayor, I would be like, this is what we're cracking down on. Here, here. That and fucking big diesel trucks idling outside oh, everyone's the window. Idol. Hate the Eric Idle. Bad for the uh, environment. Idol. And also, I'm just sitting in my house watching TV here listening to blah, 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 Bleep that. I'll bleep that. But they just just sit out there, and I got the window open. It's a nice breeze cooking, and just, I can't hear the TV. Yeah, it's annoying as hell, but uh, it was fun to watch them kind of like, they didn't get hurt, unfortunately, but a nice bump into each other. But I I, I hope more people, I, I just want to shove these people. I know. I'm well, like, we live in a fucking society. You have to stop at red lights. Yeah, and it's good that they hit each other. It's like scooter on scooter crime, because they, they didn't hit an old lady and fuck her up. You know, it's nice that they, they fucked each other up. It's like when I used to go to this gym, and this guy would blare music. We all hated him. And one day, out of God's plan, some other guy came in, and he started blaring music, and they started yelling at each other. Like, I love hey, that. turn that shit down. I'm like, you're all assholes. Don't you get it? It was the Blair Music Project. Yeah. There we go. There we go. I don't, who needs woo, sleep? Woo, 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 woo. Good to have you back. All right. Well, so, anyways, December 11th. My. So that's one week. thing, the scooter. I thought you had two two little nubs. Oh, the other thing was uh, 
Oh my God! I mean, this, this is a longer tell. I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep it tight. But uh, how are we looking? Oh, oh geez. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You so, want to save it the bonus? I'll save it for the bonus, All the right. Patreon. But they're gonna get mad because they're like, well, "Oh, why are you gonna fucking whatever?" It's Christmas time. Help a Patreon. brother Patreon. Join the Patreon for the best story you ever heard. Ooh. By the way, we've been doing a lot. The Patreon, upon popular fucking request. We've been doing a lot more just regular podcasting here. Just yes. me and Mark keeping it going. We just keep the fucking thing rolling. It's a Tuesday's so light. If you're one of these people that said, oh, they're just watching TV, fuck them. Of course, half the people are like, that's the best thing that's ever happened. I know. It's hard to gauge who likes what. The secret to failure is to try to please everybody. But here, here. Cosby said it. Anyway, so there's a lot more podcasts. But give the gift of Patreon. Ah, uh-huh. Yes, be a patron. Patronize. Get Patreon somebody. Give someone the... Uh, the gift of Patreon. Anyways, we're on the Patreon. Join the Patreon. It'll be fun. A lot of stuff. We do something every week. A half hour extra podcast per week. Woo, doggy. That's on the not Patreon. Too shabby. Uh, any tits. I am in Tacoma, January 11th to the 13th. That's a big town for me. It's a home away from home. It might be my home someday. Who knows? We'll see. But uh, I want to fill that out, bang it up, bang it out, because. Uh, Obviously, I got some fam dam there, and I want to take care of them. I'm bringing the fucking baby across the country. That's terrifying. So fill that up. Tacoma, January 11th to the 13th. The weekend after that, Poughkeepsie is uh, dis- uh, January 19th and 20, or 20 and 21, whatever that weekend is. Come out to that. And then Comedy Mothership, Ooh, February 8th doggy. through 10. I'm going to have some special guests who you're going to want to see. Uh, very funny people. Come out to that Austin, Texas Comedy Mothership. Make sure you get those tickets. Ton of dates in 2025. And uh, check out Punch Up Live and uh, sign up for my email list. Trying to crank up that email list. Marcus? Hot dog. I will be all over the goddamn road. MarkNormanComedy.com. You know where to find me. I'll be in a Norfolk and uh, Baltimore at the Lyric. And oh, then... that's a nice one. Oh, really? I did that. It was the first gig I ever did with Louie. Oh, wow. Well, the first of the tour. Yeah. yeah legendary room. Oh, great. Then uh, Birmingham and Ooh. Shreveport. That'll be tough sledding. Boy. And then uh, going to Mexico City with the lady. Oh, nice. Yeah, we decided, fuck it, let's uh, live. I might try to have a rug rat soon, so we're going to try to do some traveling before we die. That's where uh, Canner got engaged. Oh, that's right. But, okay. man, if you're hitting those markets in theaters, that you have you have done something special. Well, Shreveport, Mobile, whatever the other one you said. Yeah, I, I, uh, Birmingham, but i got to tell you, the tickets aren't pretty. So, But, but still... Thank you. You do some of these shows, though, like a half full. You're like, oh, God, half full. It's a fucking giant room. They still sound pretty good. Of course. There's 800 people there. I know, but you'd think it would just drown out with the no, negative space. No drown. That fucking rules. Matthew and Perry's sell these out. Get, get these tickets going. And the Beacon. Where's the we at with the Beacon? Oh, jeez. Thank you. What January you 27th. I keep forgetting. January 27th. Come on out. We're going to have a hot show. We'll figure it out. I'll try to get Jerry to open. Who knows? <laughs> But uh, Beacon, baby, January 27th, New York City. Beacon of hope. Yes. Chuckles. Oh, yeah. Check out my podcast, Fun Bearable, uh, with uh, comedian Ray Harrington, improv guy Brad Rohr. we got a bunch of holiday episodes coming up. It's going to be uh, a lot of fun. FunBearablePod.com or at FunBearablePod. There it is. All right. We'll see you in hell, folks. Happy holidays.